As the Thanksgiving weekend comes to a close, you may feel as overstuffed as that turkey you ate. And if you're overweight, and the chances are you are, it's probably because you eat too much, too much of the wrong stuff. Most of the wrong stuff we eat comes in a bottle, a can, or a box, food that's been processed. Much of that food has been flavored. The flavoring industry is the enabler of the food processing business, which depends on it to create a craving for everything from soda pop to chicken soup. It is Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory as a multi-billion dollar industry, an industry cloaked in secrecy. But recently, Givaudan, the largest flavoring company in the world, allowed us in to see them work their magic. The story will continue in a moment. So definitely an aroma. The mandarin, dancy tangerine. Real mild though, not in your face. These are super sniffers, super tasters. And more bitter. On the prowl, the special forces first responders to the call for the next best taste. The mandarin notes are fantastic. Yeah. They're braving the wilds of a citrus grove in Riverside, California, where Jim Hassel, whose nose and palate are legendary, leads a Givaudan team on a taste safari. Big game hunters in search of the next great taste in soft drinks. Their inspiration, the greatest flavorist of them all, Mother Nature. Seeing everything that's available really just uh, drives the whole creative process. Like an artist going to Rome or something. Correct, correct. But the ultimate purpose is to sell more soft drinks or whatever. That's what the, we're in the business of. <laughs> Selling flavors. <laughs> Let's go sniffing. Our perception of taste is largely located in the nose, but described in the language of music. Do you get like a tropical note, a little bit of papaya? Yep. Potentially? Yeah, a yeah. cotton candy note. Cotton candy a little bit. They are plotting how to move the flavors they find in this grove to your supermarket shelf, and then on to your stomach. I can see it in a sports drink, I can see it in a uh, water, flavored water, and I also can see it in a twist on an orange carbonated beverage. When they find something they like, they extract its flavor molecules from the fruit on the tree. Then back in the lab, they mimic Mother Nature's molecules with chemicals. Essentially, what you do is you take whatever this smells like right. and copy it. Right, you can act it. And then I suppose you could, if you choose to, you could quote unquote improve on it. Exactly, yes. we all the time. The holy grail, a flavor so good, you can't resist it. In our fruit flavors we're talking about, we want, you know, a burst in the beginning and maybe a finish that doesn't linger too much so that you want more of it. And you don't want a long linger because you're not going to eat more of it if it lingers. Ah, <laughs> so I see it's got to be a quick fix and then have more and then have more. But that suggests something else. Exactly. Which is called addiction. Exactly. You're trying to create an addictive taste. It's a good word. Or, it's or something that they want to go back for again and again. Food companies know that flavor is what makes repeat customers. So they commissioned Givaudan to create what they hope will be a mouth-watering taste. Givaudan may be the biggest multinational you've never heard of. The Swiss company employs almost 9,000 people in 45 countries, providing tastiness to just about every cuisine imaginable. There's a lot of secrecy involved in your profession, correct? Our intellectual property are our formulas. Without that, we have nothing, so there's a lot of secrecy. You really don't want anyone to know. My world is making things taste good. <laughs> Soda pop and chewing gum flavorist Michelle Hagen has helped Givaudan and the food companies make billions with her secret formulas. I create thousands of flavors, so I need somewhere to put them. <laughs> and I have a lot of flavors in here. <laughs> so here are some oranges and tangerines. 750 flavors, orange, tangerine, <laughs> mandarins. Raspberry is one of my favorite. <laughs> I can't even fit all my raspberries on here. How different can raspberries be? Oh, very different, very <laughs> different. Oh, yeah, you can make them jammy, you can make them sweet, you can make them floral, you can make them seedy. Um, it's endless, really. <laughs> and the flavor ingredients might not have ever met a raspberry. I have butyric acid artificial, and then I have butyric acid natural. 
All flavors are combinations of chemicals. Artificial flavors are largely man-made. Natural flavors come from nature, but not necessarily from what the label implies. For example, strawberry creations. Strawberry and vanilla flavor can come from the gland in a beaver's backside. So what we do is just uh, manipulate them and create with them and give the impression of, you know, the papaya or, or the strawberry. Hagen is an illusionist. She's even created a flavor that mimics the taste and smell of an old oak tree. To give whiskey a little bit more depth sometimes, a young whiskey. Oh, to give the taste of the barrel, it was supposed yeah. to have been aged <laughs> yeah. in, correct? Yes. Yeah, you can add some cask notes, some oak notes. Okay, here we go. Hassel and Hagen let us in on the alchemy of inventing a new flavor. This one inspired by a Hong Kong kumquat that the team found not in Hong Kong, but back in Riverside. It's a process using hundreds of different notes until they've created a symphony of taste. I mean, with a name like Hong Kong kumquat, you really have to have something going on, I think. But I'm curious to see the carrot on top of the kumquat. That is interesting. That is very interesting. You get the citrus, but you have the, the carrot poking its head out. Yeah, it's very complex. But not overpowering. That's really exciting. This is a home run. There's no shortage of metaphors in the flavoring business. Givadon goes to the ends of the earth, scouting for new flavors. In Hong Kong, Givadon convened their annual conclave of top chefs from restaurants around the world to demonstrate their latest creations. The goal, to turn those creations into new commercial flavors. The chefs mixed, chopped, mashed, steamed, sauteed, and smoked for a week to create irresistible, cutting-edge cuisine. Hong Kong chef Alvin Lung didn't disappoint. It makes you want to eat this again and again and again, okay? It's like sex, okay? You know, you want to do it over and over again until you get a headache. The Givadon team didn't just taste the food, they sniffed, photographed, analyzed, and debated it. Then they distilled the best into flavor powders, applied them to beef and noodles, and voila! a frozen dinner. This is our translation into a frozen ready meal that you could buy in the supermarkets to really deliver a different eating experience. Givenon chef Stefan Strehler demonstrated how convincing these translations can be compared to the real thing. We have here the whole lineup of some of the chicken flavors, so that's a roasted chicken flavor. <laughs> it sure is. It absolutely matches it. Givadon makes flavors that match almost every kind of chicken imaginable. This is crusty, fatty chicken. We just take a little skin here, and when you smell it that now, you get much more of those fatty, crusty notes. And when you smell it that flavor... <laughs> yes, sure it is. Now, what is this? Is this actually chicken? It can be, yes. A lot of what you have in front of you is the chicken that has been translated into a flavor. Translated on a grand scale in the Givadon plant in Kentucky. This is a chicken flavor as a liquid in the tank. An endless stream of brown liquid, part chicken, part chemical, all flavor. This is the chicken we looked at in the tank right here. Oh. So this is the chicken in the hose. This is the chicken in the hose, okay. The chicken in the hose, right. We'll stretch this hose out and we'll actually load the liquid into these individual trays. It gets vacuum dried in the oven. And it comes out in a dry cake form. We'll grind that into a fine powder. Chicken, just like grandma used to make. It's used in soups, stews, sausage, noodle, and rice dishes. Chicken by the ton. Chicken for every taste. Our old friend, Krusty Fatty. Chicken for vegetarians. Yes, chicken without chickens. Ground zero for the food and flavor industry is the supermarket. Givaudan won't reveal which brands contain their flavors, but in this aisle, almost every product on the shelves has been enhanced artificially 
or with so-called natural flavors. And not only that, virtually everything edible in a package, in a jar, in a can, is intensified with either fat, sugar, or salt, or all three of those little devils. We're eating fat on fat on sugar on fat with flavor. And much of what we're eating with these flavors, you have to ask yourself, is it really food? Dr. David Kessler is the former head of the FDA. He is Dr. No. He's bent on getting America to kick its bad habits. We're living in a food carnival. These flavors are so stimulating. They hijack our brain. Kessler believes flavorists are accomplices, the hired guns of the food industry. They make food super palatable. What's wrong with that? Don't we want the richness of good taste? Of course. Food has to be pleasurable. It has to be desirable. But look around, Morley. Look around this country. And what do you see? Ask the rest of the world how they view Americans. And they will say, we don't want to look like that. Are you saying that the food industry and the flavoring industry together are trying to make and succeeded in making us addicted? Did the industry do this deliberately? No. It learned what stimulates. It learned what people want. There's no question we're trying to create an irresistibility and a memorability. I think, though, that there's then uh, a leap to get to that leads to overconsumption. Bob Pellegrino is Givenon's flavor czar as vice president of global strategy and business development. Your critics say, but you provide the means to seduce people into eating too much salt, too much fat, too much sugar, and responsible partly for the obesity in this country. Our business is to make taste experiences pleasurable ones. So I, I don't think that the flavors create an overeating problem. I think that's a, a different issue. But is it a different issue? Because surely what your clients want, the food industry wants, is to provide the kind of flavor that will make people want more. I don't think it's creating a desire for moreness as well as it's a desire for memorability so that people will repeat the purchases of the product and enjoy them. But given the obesity epidemic, the food industry is beginning to respond to pressure for lessness, if there is such a word, of fat, salt, and sugar. And that's opening up a whole new business opportunity and another challenge for these alchemists of flavor. Everyone, everyone, everyone is working on health and wellness. How can you get a consumable, acceptable product that's better for you? And the challenge now is how do you make them taste good? Uh, not enough. So when you lower the salt, what can we put in that will make it taste like it did without salt? When you lower the sugar, how can you make it taste sweeter without adding calories? So it's a whole new world that didn't even exist 10 years ago. But the consumers are interesting. As much as they want to be healthy, right, if it's not as sweet, oh, I don't want it. People are still going for the tried and true, heavy on sugar, heavy on salt, heavy on fat. Yeah, so I guess the real question is uh, obesity going down. <laughs> and I guess the answer would be no.